On July 1, 2010, Neil McFarlane became general manager of TriMet, the main transit agency for the Portland metro area. During his predecessor, Fred Hansen's tenure, the agency had seen the expansion of four light rail lines and a number of well-publicized accomplishments. But in recent years, especially in the current recession, TriMet has also seen service cuts, and there has been controversy over funding, the lack of progress for bus service, and concerns about safety and security. I'm definitely disappointed that you guys have chosen to increase fares by five cents. The community needs to know that this is only going to raise $1.3 million. And this five cent increase, in many ways, is going to disproportionately impact the most transit dependent, lowest income, working class people here in the metro area. I recognize in the comments there was a uh, mention of the Beaver heat treating plant that has to be moved. That's going to cost upwards of $23 million for so the one business. I can only assume that TriMet, in its wisdom, would, would go ahead and fund that or p try to pay for that if it was $50 million or $100 million because there seems to be no obstacle that's too insurmountable for the board in considering continuing with this line. $1.3 million is less than one half of 1% of the operating budget for TriMet's buses and max. When the funds for projects are borrowed and paid back over time, then these costs have been financed. And there's a big difference there. My contention is that Milwaukee Light Rail is not funded. It's financed. And even your own share is bonded money that you haven't created any new revenue for. In fact, you rely on future operating revenue to retire that those debts. Neil inherits an agency at a crossroads, and Portland Transport arranged an interview to find out what Neil's priorities will be going forward. One of Neil's first duties is to address safety concerns, which have been at the forefront of public attention since a tragic accident last April, which claimed the lives of two pedestrians. The father of one of those killed spoke out at a recent TriMet board meeting. You've got a big job to do, Neil. These people need to know, the drivers, have got to be more aware of, the, and, and they have been since this accident, and my daughter's life has been taken. They have been more aware of the safety. It's understandable, but too little too late. We caught up with Neil just 11 days after taking the helm as he held a press conference about safety. Neil characterized last April's accident this way. All of us at TriMet are saddened by the tragic accident that occurred on April 24th in downtown Portland. It may very well be the darkest hour of our existence. First, I've begun recruiting for a new safety and security director for TriMet, and that safety and security director will report directly to me. I'm sending a very strong message that safety is our highest priority and the culture of safety at the agency begins at the top with me and touches everyone at this agency. Obviously, anything we can do to avoid anything like this again, we, we have to do. And if there's anything that keeps me awake at night, that's thinking about this is what it what does. We started off our interview by asking, in addition to safety, what Neil's other priorities for the agency would be. I actually have a number, and one um, will certainly be our bus system. I really think about the bus system priorities in really one of two ways. One is service. The other is technology. Obviously, um, the last thing anybody in public transportation ever wants to do is reduce service, and I stand by that as well. Um, however, we need to have a balanced budget every year, and that's caused um, some really difficult choices in the midst of this economic near depression, certainly great recession that we've had. So my hope is to restore some of the really efficient, important uh, bus service that we've had to cut over the last year as the economy begins to improve. And knock on wood, I hope it is improving. Second is bus technology. And we were fortunate in receiving a federal grant uh, announced on Friday that allows us to purchase four hybrid buses. The Line 72 will see some great improvements over the next years thanks to our federal partners. You know, there's lots of attention to light rail, to streetcar, but the backbone of the system is the bus network. And being able to lighten the carbon footprint of the buses uh, while we provide better service to the neighborhoods, uh, it gives people choices in terms of how they move, how they get around, uh, how they organize their lives. 
um, and we're going to get right on that and hope to add those to the fleet. Um, the order time is about, the receipt time is about 20 months, but we'll even hope to see if we can do a little better than that over time. One of the things I think we have to sort of begin to think about long term is that um, the hydrocarbon based um, uh, fuel system for our diesel buses is, um, is going to be increasingly more expensive and increasingly uh, probably harder to find. And so if you sort of look, at, look out 50 years, where is bus technology going to be? And so one of the things I want to do is begin to experiment with uh, some new technologies over time. Another major priority is I want to see TriMet become a really key partner in the economic recovery of this region. And I think there's really two aspects of that that come along. One is how can we be a better partner in terms of service? But the other is um, the Portland to Milwaukee light rail project which is a major investment of federal discretionary dollars. Uh, it's projected to bring on the order of 14,000 jobs, or FTEs, if you will, to the region over its construction period. Um, and those are jobs coming to the region when we need them the most. Obviously, it all takes money, so that's, um, that's going to be one of the challenges ahead. Certainly, safety is at the top of the list, as you said at the very beginning. Um, I think that's it's obviously critical, and um, there are elements of safety that sort of flow through everything we do, including uh, beginning to prioritize buses and, and new equipment. Um, I'd love to see more new buses here at TriMet. We've got a number of initiatives underway to see if we can accomplish that. I know you come from a project management type background. Uh, how do you plan to address these operational issues? Well. I'm going to address another topic head on, first of all, is that um, I have my job over the last 19 years was to deliver rail projects. Um, and so I was the rail guy to a large extent over the last, but my job right now is the trans to be the transit guy. And so I'm here to make sure that the whole system grows and prospers, not just the rail side, not just the bus side. The whole system needs the rail problem. And I would, I would come back and say that I think actually the bus system right now is in need of probably more energy and attention. So uh, related to that, we are uh, applying as we speak for additional FTA grants for bus replacement. I might note that TriMet is not um, completely, um, hasn't completely forgotten this priority. I mean, if you look at our, our financial forecasts, we're buying 80 buses every two years um, out into the out into the future. So 80 buses every two years does begin to make uh, an effect on the, on the fleet. I'd love to find a really big bang that would allow us to uh, do more than that, and that's indeed some of our opportunities, I think, with federal funding that we're going to be looking at in the future. As far as uh, safety, we did have one question specifically. Uh, Sheriff Roberts of the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office has implied that the Green Line has caused an over 40 percent increase in crime in the area around it. Crime rates in the area of the Green Line and Clackamas Town Center have risen significantly for us. We've seen a 48 percent increase in crime and a 33 percent increase in calls for service over the same period last year. Are you aware of how this was determined, and do you feel people should be concerned about new light rail construction coming to their neighborhoods? Um, it's a, I know it's a difficult issue. I don't know how um, the sheriff collected his data. What I can tell you is what we know from uh, reports on our system. Uh, first of all is that we've had very few reports of incidents uh, that have required a police response on the green line. It's been incredibly safe and I think the customers who use it on a regular basis would tell you so. But for the rest of the system we've seen double digit decreases in incidents over the, each of the last two years. And I think that's responded directly um, to the increase in the number of uh, police officers that we've um, assigned as well as the way they've been assigned which is to make sure that they're on the system 70 percent of their time. I would say though that the other thing that has really been important to me in terms of when I've gone out over the last few weeks and met with people who ride, I mean for example I had a conversation with the Gresham Chamber and two, um, I don't want to call them elderly because they'd be, a, but older ladies stood up and said we've really noticed the difference and we're not afraid to ride Max uh, from Gresham into the city now. So thank you for that effort. So that to me is the better anecdote and the better story if our customers and our users are actually seeing the difference, and I think many of them are.